coming up on Theater Talk. Jesse, do you like Sunset Boulevard? I mean, are, are, you, are you one of those snooty critics who just runs down Andrew Lloyd Webber at every turn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation and Ellen Seagroff. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. With me is my co-host, Michael Riedel, Managing Editor of Theater Week Magazine. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Who's that? Lord. Michael. Who's that cute guy with the glasses? <laughs> what the <laughs> hell happened to us? <laughs> Jesus. And now you look like Yoko Ono. <laughs> so I have to tell you, 25 years ago, to this day, oh. we premiered on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network <laughs> together. <sighs> Uh, well, yes, we were young and sprightly. Prime and time. I, we had our whole future ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> Big careers in television, and look where they went. Uh, <laughs> Still doing theater talk 25 years in. Merrily we roll along, that's right. But here we have this splendid group who are, I believe are celebrating the 10th or 11th year with us. Is that all? <laughs> you, you, you certainly look like it, boys. <laughs> Welcome to uh, 25 years of theater talk. Uh, we are going to actually uh, not look back. Uh, we're going to look ahead at the upcoming uh, spring season on Broadway. Uh, it's jam-packed with a lot of very interesting things. Uh, and we're joined by Michael Musto of, uh, I was going to say the Village <laughs> Voice, but I think I am 20, back there 25 years ago. And it turns out that No, but I am writing for The Voice again, but I'm basically with Out.com in a weekly column, Musto the Musical. And your first show, I remember, it was about Subways Are For Sleeping and Maggie <laughs> Flynn. It was <laughs> dazzling. <laughs> Remember when we had the cast of Flahooli? They were doing that. Puppets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. also, Patrick Pacheco, who's older than that clip from New, Thank you very much. from New York, went on stage and artinfo.com, right? Thank you very much. And Jesse Green from New York Magazine. And I must uh, thank you, Jesse, for uh, substituting for me when I was uh, on the road promoting my book, Razzle Dazzle, The Battle for Broadway. <laughs> and I must say, I saw some of the show. <laughs> I saw some of the shows, and Susan just looks so much happier when she's seated <laughs> next to you than she ever looks when she's sitting next to me. Well, I hadn't yet found the, the buzzer that, that <laughs> prods her. So uh, now that I know where it is, it'll be, you, yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah. She, doesn't right. wear, she doesn't wear dark glasses with Jesse. <laughs> She's not in hiding. I, I, I want to say, as hip as I am, I, I have a very slight eye injury, and so... That's Excuse interesting. Me. We're back yeah. to war pain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean to hit you so hard. I'm sorry. All right. Um, oh. Let's. Uh, you better cut that. Leave All, it right. In. All, All right. All right. Let's jump right in here. Um, I wrote in my column recently in the New York Post <laughs> that Hello Dolly with <laughs> Bette Midler. Uh, it's got a $25 million advance, and actually I heard from the producer, Scott Rudin, who said, wrong, $29 million. <laughs> but what's $4 million? Uh, in between yeah. friends, exactly. Uh, this seems to be shaping up to be the, the ticket to get uh, this spring, uh, Patrick. And, you know, I've had a four-week workshop, Jerry Zachs, the director, with Bette Midler. Are, are we hearing anything about it, about her? Uh, if you can get a ticket. Yeah. I mean, if, if you can get one, I think they're almost impossible to find. I think it's sold out in record time once the tickets went on sale. It's going to just have premium price tickets probably from here on in. But it's just the marriage of a, a great name, Bette Midler, mm -hmm. in, who's rarely on Broadway, uh, with a great title. But now uh, she's not Dolly. doing the matinee, am I correct? Donna uh, Murphy. Donna Murphy. Donna Murphy. Donna Murphy. Jesse not got not the right away. Uh, for oh. the first six or nine weeks, I don't know, uh, Bette Midler's doing the whole uh -huh. thing. And then at, at a certain point, they will gracefully bring in Donna. That well, certain point is after she wins the Tony Award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might have something to do with that. <laughs> yeah. actress in the musical. Then she'll be down to two performances <laughs> a week. But, but it's an interesting situation to have, uh, you know, an international star in the lead most of the performances. And in the other performances, someone who's quite beloved and known on Broadway. Donna Murphy. Yeah. So well, it's, she well, might well sell. This is genius casting because Carol Channing obviously put her imprimatur on the role mm -hmm. and is like a living cartoon character and was perfect as Dolly Levy. Then they redid it with an all black cast and Pearl Bailey. That went a whole different direction. That was a smash. And Ethel Merman and Mary Martin. and Everyone did it. Jack, Everybody, Jack well, Benny was going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> then recently, way, that, Pearl, that Pearl Bailey soundtrack is terrific. Yeah. 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 Cab Calloway, I think. is. Well, she broke the fourth wall and just made the show her own, literally. <laughs> and the genius of Bette Midler is she is not Carol Channing. She's saucier, she's wittier, she's more nudge-nudge. Yeah. She's more wicked. I hope Jerry Zachs holds a tight rein on her and gets a performance, not just Sophie Tucker's Well, you've known, her a, long time. you've known her a long time. Oh, yeah. I've, I've found
around her, one of the greatest live performers really in the history of show. But does she have a tendency to sort of stray from the script? Well, she or is from wearing a mermaid suit when she comes down the stairs. <laughs> one of the mermaid gardens. But other than that, it's she's a very straightforward production of Hello Dolly. <laughs> How is Hello Dolly? I mean, it's from 1964. It's, it's is a great it, old war. Is it an old fashioned thing that only, you know, my grandmother's going to like? Or do you no. think it, no, a, a I, young, I young generation can respond? It's an to. old war horse that, that is. Repeatedly been revived and, and done fairly successful in in revival. I think most of it has been Carol Janning, and it's a great comic role that I think she'll bring a new dimension to. Bette Midler, that is, will bring it, a, a new dimension to. It's it. based on a really solid play that also yeah. works, if except it's never done because the musical has superseded it by Thornton Wilder. The Magic. Yeah. The Magic. Uh, Le Leroy Reams, who directed several versions that Carol did, once told me when I think they were in St. Louis and they were playing a big arena, and the, they pulled into the arena <clears throat> and. There was a big poster that said, Carol Channing in Hello, Dolly. And below it said, Antique Show, September 24th <laughs> to the 27th. Um, but uh, you know what I kind of like what Scott Rudin, the producer, has done, though, Michael, is he's gone back to the original David Merrick advertising campaign for Hello, Dolly. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is? Yeah, Carol no. Channing. <laughs> Carol, Carol Channing and Hello Dolly. And the wonder it's selling. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know he's got, he's actually using uh, the original logo from, from, the show in, well, in look, the we're all sick to death of re redoing and reimagining everything. I'm glad that they're seeming to do this as a traditional show, and they're going back to the advertising. They're going back to the, you know, just what Hello Dolly represents. It yeah. really wouldn't work as a reimagined, you know, dark uh, Trump era set in a mental home or <laughs> right, Studio right. 54. <laughs> it, it works the way it was. Do it the way it was. Yeah. When you have a star like Bette Midler, Michael, and you'd probably know this, does she have veto power over the director? Uh, I mean, I don't think you just hire a director and say, here's the director bet. No. I think she was heavily involved in to talking to people, and uh, she and Jerry, I know, get along very, very well. But, I mean, Jerry's a great guy. I mean, Jerry Zaks is a guy that everyone likes working with. Terrific director, and this is good material for and him. And the other Jerry, Mr. Herman, must be thrilled that his work is finally getting revived on Broadway. He has not been on Broadway in a long time. I know, yeah, you know, Jerry Herman's 85 years old, and uh, I know he's, he's a little frail. He doesn't travel very much, but I've been told he's going to make a point uh -huh. of coming up for the opening of Hello, Dolly. I don't think he flies anymore, so he's going to take the train up from Miami where he lives, but he really wants is to. Is he going to put on his Sunday clothes? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to take the trolley car up. You better get them before the parade passes. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> terrible, Michael. Um, all right, a couple of other shows I wanted to talk about, uh, Patrick. Um, I'm curious about this. Uh, you know, Bette Midler has got to be, I, I suppose, the favorite for the Tony Award, but let's not discount Patti Lapone and Christine Ebersole in War Paint uh, about the battle between the cosmetic queens, um, Helena Rubinstein and Elizabeth Arden. Elizabeth Arden. Arden. Yeah. In Chicago, yeah. got okay reviews, but it I understand okay. they've done a lot of work on it. Yep, that's exactly it. I think coming out of Chicago, it was that these two star turns are terrific. And especially for Christine Ebersole to some extent. I yeah. mean, Patti LuPone got very good reviews as well. But it really is this, uh, you know, face off of the divas, so to speak. And, and that's a great draw. But the reviews did basically say that it did need some work yeah. uh, coming out of uh, there. And the show, a good about, score. the show is about two women who never met, but the show dramatically has them meeting, of course. Yeah, well, that's okay. That's they, okay. But no, I, I love Patti LaBelle. I think she's a great singer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 never mind. <laughs> uh, no, but I talked to Doug Wright, one of the creators of the show, and he uh -huh. said Christine and Patti have opposite approaches to their work. Patti comes on the set and Let's eat, try this. Let's eat try <laughs> eats everybody alive. Let's try this. No, she's brilliant, and and Christine is very calculated and has everything planned in advance. Mm -hmm. And they're they didn't clash at all, though. That their different approaches worked, and they no. Loved. Oddly enough, I heard they got along quite quite well out of town. And is that to character? The, those kinds of approaches was Lydia Rubenstein like that, and and well, they're extremely I'm an old, well queen, done. I'm an old gay, but I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> they're very well cast for the roles. You couldn't imagine them in switched roles. Rubenstein was a, a it, European refugee. Yeah. So you, you, you don't see Christine Ebersole in that part. You <laughs> no. don't see Patti Lapone in that part. And apparently her accent's hilarious, Patti's accent as the European. And, and the, the show yeah. was written to their strengths yeah, and their right. voices. The show is written for gays over 50 and by <laughs> gays over 50. <laughs> so I'm excited. <laughs> and it has a great score by Michael Corey and Scott Frank. And directed by... Uh, Michael Grice, you know, pretty sounds, much from the Grey Gardens team. It yeah. sounds to me like a good old-fashioned, fun star vehicle for these two larger-than-life broads. You, it's sort of like Ethel Merman and Mary Martin together again or something like that. Yeah. We haven't really seen that. Well, I suppose Wicked had a little bit of that with yeah. Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel. Adina yeah. Menzel. Yeah. But uh, usually one female lead in the show is all you're going to get. So, it's Right. Um, uh, Patrick, uh, 
you know, there's a wonderful August Wilson play that, we, Susan, we yeah. saw years ago, mm -hmm. Jitney. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the plays, though, that isn't done very much, and you don't hear about it, but it's coming back now to Broadway. I think it's one of his best plays. I think it was one of his earliest plays, too, if I'm not mistaken. I agree. I agree with you. It, it was, and it was only it only played off Broadway. This is its yeah, Broadway right. debut. This is the first time it's appearing on Broadway, and I think probably next to Joe Turner, it's my favorite uh, play of all. Of course, of the Hill District in Pittsburgh, which was the site of this uh, you know ten play cycle that he achieved before he died at the age of sixty. I mean, it's an extraordinary body of work, and I think you're right. I think it was one of his earlier. Well, plays. it was written very early, but he put it in a drawer, right. and then it was completely rewritten mm. in the '90s. So it actually, by the time it was produced. It was later than most of his plays, but it was. An and it's early the one set in the taxi cab stand, right? They're all hanging yeah, out in the 1970s. So each, each of the plays in this sequence deals with a different decade of black American life in Pittsburgh, and this is the 1970s sequence. Well, we have a musical about airplanes, we have a, a musical <laughs> about the subway, and now we have a play about the Jitneys. It's fine with me. Um, there's a lot of renewed interest in August Wilson because of the movie Offenses, directed by oh, Denzel right. Washington. And in fact, Denzel is committed to. D producing, not directing, but producing all ten of August Wilson's plays mm. as uh, as movies. As movies. As movies. Oh. I think most of them are really superb pieces of literature, uh -huh. except for there's one I think in the <laughs> '80s. The remember that political one that. Well, there's really, radio, right, they won't radio, do that golf. One. radio golf. Radio golf. Yeah. Oh, I love Perhaps. radio golf. Well, there right. you go. <laughs> <laughs> there's something for everyone when you have a century's worth of plays. But it's great poetry. I mean, the, in the way that Tennessee Williams is, which we have is Glass Menagerie, but. It's great poetry, and it's great to hear and that kind of richness. And he writes wonderfully flawed characters. People are very proud and kind of drive other people away, but have wonderful sides to them as well. Yeah. yeah. I, was doing, I was doing some uh, research on him. I interviewed some of the pr producers who did his early work, and they said when he would present them with the play, it would be 500 pages. <laughs> I mean, he would just bring the bundle <laughs> and oh, really? drop it on the desk. Yeah. And then his process was he would then just winnow went away. I mean, the plays are still pretty well, long. Work but they'd be five, they'd be five, five, well, yeah, but you couldn't tell him what to do. He did it on his own, in a way. He just sat there and he watched how people responded, and ah. he sort of could tell. That's what Kate Blanchett does, but she doesn't <laughs> win <all> away. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the present on Broadway. Yes. I loved it. <laughs> well, we're, well, we're talking about the fact that it's three hours plus. The, the, the present, yes. Well, yes, but you, you could see Chekhov. that as an achievement. The original manuscript by Chekhov, which was never finished. Platonov, right? And he, yeah. Platonov, and it, well, it was didn't even have a name, but it has been called Platonov. Uh, and he put it away, and he didn't consider it rescuable. Runs to some five or six hours. And this is an is adaptation that, of that? And that didn't, yes, have, song, an and that didn't have songs by Depeche Mode. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is an adaptation of the unfinished and basically thrown away Manuscript by Chekhov from, from when he was. It's and really a, it's a complete rewrite by Kate's husband. Who yeah. is married? But, yeah, yeah, right. Who's right. Married. Any good? Very good, and very shocking. I mean, she does some dirty dancing. She's. <laughs> she's there <laughs> is the most amazing moment <laughs> when they're at a party. They're all bored because that's what happens. I, a a Chekhov. Yeah. Chekhov's <laughs> place. And but I've never seen this. I I hope it's not giving away too much. She's she's not even the focus <laughs> of attention that moment. But she kind of reaches into her dress and she removes her bra from under her dress and dumps it on the floor. <laughs> While, she, while, she's holding a, while she's holding a rifle, a pistol, yeah. and a detonator, <laughs> and playing Truth or Dare, see yeah. this show. Uh, yes. Are you kidding? Are you serious? I'm serious. Well, really happens. Well, because it's <laughs> not very Jacobian in that way. <laughs> no. More Alan Ackborn. <laughs> it has one of the great short lines, which he says, "Did you take my detonator?" <laughs> Again, not a Chekhovian line, but... And she might say to Sally Field, did you take my Tony? <laughs> it's been updated to the Glasnost period in Russia instead of... The <laughs> and, and for those who don't know, we should say that is Sally there... Field is coming back to play and Amanda Wingfield in the Glasnost. And we, li we really like her. We now, let's, oh. we, yeah, let's go that. through. We don't have that much time left. I want to do a Sunset Boulevard with Glenn Close. I think it's one of Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, best scores. It was. Uh, it wasn't. Well, it's Randall somebody's best score. <laughs> that was very mean. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> uh, it was a big, big show with Glenn Close on Broadway in the '90s. She won the Tony Award. It won the Tony Award. It looked like a gigantic hit. It ran. Then it was so expensive it never made any money. But this one's coming back, limited run. And the interesting thing is, uh, uh, forty-one piece orchestra, I believe. That's the best part about it. Yeah, the, the largest orchestra on Broadway in years. The original was bloated, and I think the best. Uh, the uh, best Norma Desmond was Betty Buckley. But yes, yeah, she was actually I agree. Oh, she, she was, was she was superb. She was. But uh, the interesting thing about the original production is that it was considered bloated. Yeah. And if you're going to bloat this production, bloat it with 41 musicians. Don't bloat it with the scenery. Well, what's the I set going to be? Folks. 
focus away. I hope it's simplified, Michael. I don't know if it's... Yes, because that set was a big thing. About yeah, no, no, no. The, 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 the mansion doesn't fly anymore. It's, it's not all gold. It's a staged performance. Yeah, it's a staged, staged performance. Yeah. Because I saw a very minimalist uh, production in London some years ago, and it worked beautifully, because you're right. The music is terrific. I think for better and, or worse, the show humanizes Norman Desmond, whereas in the movie, she's this scary, brilliant gargoyle. Right. In the play, she has feelings. I, mean, I don't know why I'm frightened and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> one thing about the part is you that you look can't, like her. You can't... <laughs> eight, I am her. <laughs> you can't age out of playing Norma Desmond. It's like being an Elvis impersonator. No mm -hmm. matter how old you get, you're still okay to play Norma as Desmond. As long as you're alive. I, I know. Now. You saw that clip of us 25 years ago. We're still Norma I see you in the flesh. Norma Desmond. Speak for yourself. Do you no. like the show, Pat uh, Patrick? Jesse, do you like Sunset Boulevard? I mean, are, are, you, are you one of those snooty critics who just runs down Andrew Lloyd Webber at every turn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't uh, go I, I do like some of the songs in Sunset Boulevard, and I'm very eager to give this a chance. But I, I typically find, particularly the lyric writing that accompanies his music to be kind of awful. And that's Don Black, right? Who well, writes the Don Black, one of it's, my good friends. It's I think various it's, lyric writers for various. No, it's Don, it's Don Black here. But I, I, but I think as if we never said goodbye and with one luck are two yeah. superb musical theater songs. Yes, I didn't. Totally. I wasn't speaking of this show. I was talking about the whole oeuvre. <laughs> now, let's, let, let's turn our focus, since we're almost out of time. I want to go with, with each of you to say one thing for the spring season that you're very excited about. Who would like to start? Well, I, I'd say Sunday in the Park with George, because we haven't yeah. had one in two years. And um, <laughs> I love Annalie Ashford, the Tony winner, who's uh -huh. playing Dot. And Jake Gyllenhaal, I think they just finally got out of the wings of Little Shop, where he was standing there as everyone applauded for Alan Green. <laughs> so he's finally getting his starring moment. <laughs> It, did you see it when it was done as a benefit no. concert? No. Did you see it, uh, Jesse? I couldn't get in. Did, yeah. No, so none of us have seen no. it. No. no Sondheim's it, got a hit, finally. Okay. So no, it, you, Patrick? I agree with Michael, but I'd all, I'm also looking for, forward to Anastasia uh, with Darko Trishna. What are you, a 12-year-old girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our producer, Myra Wong, saw it, and she said it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. It's I'm a working with Mr. Like, Magoo here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic story. It's a timeless story, um, and uh, and I think it it got fairly fairly good reviews. Yeah, it did. World and Darko, and good director, Darko Treznak, who yeah. won the Tony Gentleman's for Guide. Gentleman's yeah. Guide. To and Lisa. is Anna Sergey revealed to be a total hoax in this? Uh, no, she's not. And I think it's important that she spoiler isn't. alert. She was later. Found. Is that a spoiler to be a alert? Total hoax. It, it isn't. It isn't a spoiler alert. Because it's really about myth making, yeah. Yeah. and you want to keep the myth. Uh, it was uh, later discovered, obviously, uh, after that she was a, that she was a total right. yeah. psycho. Yeah. yeah. So, not, not, and not Jesse. Among musicals, I'm quite interested in Groundhog Day. Yes, yeah. It's a big Never hit in that. London, and uh, Tim Minchin, who did Matilda, wonderful score. The uh, the story is a brilliant one, uh, as we know from, from the movie. In fact, brilliant enough that Sondheim himself thought of musicalizing it for uh -huh. years, but couldn't crack it. Couldn't, couldn't crack it, out. and apparently yeah. they have, so I'm really interested to see what... With Andy Carl. Uh, and, and I would just say in terms of there's a lot of new plays that are quite interesting by first-time Broadway playwrights, and that's a great thing for Broadway and, and for the Which ones are you audience. Which Jitney, Last Nazarene, well, he's not no. Present no. Laughter. No, I'm talking about Sweat <laughs> by Foxes. Lynn Nottage yeah. Yeah. and Indecent by Paula Vogel, who it's about time she had a Broadway premiere, and uh, a new Oslo. play by Lucas Hanath. Uh, called A Doll's House Part Two, which picks up where a Doll's House. Uh, Wasn't there a musical called A Doll's Life that was? Yes, there was. And, and, and I Hal was How Prince's. Why would they go there again? <laughs> oh, you, you were. I was How Prince's Apprentice on that show. Was some it as people, bad as they thought? Yeah, it, it really it? was. Um, <laughs> some people get to be his apprentice on Merrily We Roll Along or Follies. <laughs> you got they get to write books and make documentary <laughs> movies. I You're got lucky you didn't get stuck with. You're lucky you didn't get stuck with Grind. I didn't know. I didn't know Doll's House was like Star Wars, where you need eight million sequels and prequels. <laughs> Back to revivals, we have Kevin Klein in Noel Coward's present lap. A rare appearance from yeah. Kevin Klein on Broadway. It, it, we, don't see we have it. alternating yeah. actresses in Little Foxes. Laura Linney and Cynthia Nixon are going to alternate in the two lead roles, and we, we critics will probably have to see yes, both. Yes, well, you like, have to see both. Remember True West with Philip Seymour Hoffman yes, and John C. Riley. Do indeed. But it's a play that you can sit through twice. Little Foxes. <laughs> for, As opposed for to True West? <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to say that I'm looking forward to Joan of Arc Into the Fire by David Byrne, <laughs> directed by Alex Timbers. Off Broadway ah, from Public. Ah. Off the oh, that's the same team that brought us the yeah. very good Here Lies Love. Here Lies Love. Uh, okay, so I know it's a bit early for Tony Award predictions, and we'll have you on right. later in the season, but very interesting. <laughs> what I find fascinating about this season is it was the Hamilton sweep. We just knew. It was boring. Hamilton won everything. I think everything's up for grabs now. Do you? 
Patrick? Yeah, I agree with you. You wrote about it in your column, and I think that's absolutely true. We always feel that there's a heavy that's come in earlier in the season, and they're going to sweep, and then things come in at the 11th hour, and it changes the dynamic altogether. And we already that's have two wonderful, innovative musicals, Dear Evan Hansen and Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. Yep, right. right. Which are critical successes. Either of them would be Box worthy Box winners. Yeah. They'd be yeah. worthy winners for yeah. Best Musical. And But, but we can't that's discount uh, Groundhog Day. Not at no, all. Or war paint, I think. Or war and paint. Charlie or the Anastasia. Chocolate Factory is coming in, Shaman. Yay! Yeah. Oompa Loompa. <laughs> <laughs> you actually are dressed like. Oh, they have you know. new songs. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> you're alternating with Christian Borel in the lead. I <laughs> <laughs> he could be up for two Tonys. He was and in he's, he's he's giving seven performances a week, but Michael must will be there. But Donna Murphy's Saturday waiting matinees. in the wings. <laughs> But also, I think the acting categories are going to be really uh, hard fought this year, too. I saw Ben Platt in Dear Evan Hansen. Terrific. 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 Star making. And everybody says Andy Carl is sensational. He's always amazing, Andy in, Carl. Uh, in, in Groundhog Day. And Bette Midler could get competition from Annalie Asford, Sally Field from Kate Blanchett. There were actual and races here. Philippa. And who, Philippa Sue is in. Who's the star of Amelie? Uh, Amelie, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Oh, uh, one, thing we <laughs> one thing we haven't touched on Sweeney Todd. Uh, Jesse, were you Hal Prince's uh, gopher back in those days? If only. <laughs> It's a big Sondheim season. We've already talked about Sunday in the Park with George. We have this sort of environmental, immersive pie shop staging of Sweeney They're making pie. real pies. It's like waitress. Uh, real pies. No priest, <laughs> however. You know, you don't, you, it's, I think it's actual meat by, well, maybe. And um, that's <laughs> off the Broadway at the Barrow Street. And then there's, uh, uh, there's Pacific Overtures at the Classic Stage Company. Wow. Oh, I didn't and, and Sondheim's working on a new musical with David Ives yes, called Boon 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 Well, Boon 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 which Boon we may see at the public by the fall, yes. so, so the rumors go. Uh, They're having a big um, uh, workshop of it in the spring, and I hear, I hear it's very good. Yeah. Here's with David good. Ives writing the book, right? Yeah. And yes. it's based on two Boonwell movies. Yes, so the, uh, the, the street, street charm, charm of the, the bourgeoisie. bourgeoisie. Street charm of the and that obscure object of, of desire. desire. No, 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 like it's that. not that. It's, the fall, it's something angel. It's not uh, the, uh, exterminating uh, angel. Exterminating, exterminating angel. Exterminating angel. angel. Yeah. Somebody like hasn't been hanging out of the film form in a while. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd like to add that Miss Saigon, Saigon is coming back, Bublio Schoenberg, and they have a, a very dynamic new actress who may be a contender in the lead. And, and so there's an Asian MC. They've, they've no learned every, their lesson. All the Asians are Asians in this version. <laughs> well, okay. No Mickey Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> no Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Even the helicopter, I understand. Is Asian. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. Uh, it it's, uh, listen, hey, I got to tell you, I think uh, a lot of revivals, but all the revivals, a lot of them sound really good to me. So I think yeah. it's going to be an exciting spring on Broadway. All right, thanks a lot. Patrick Pacheco from uh, New York One on Stage and artinfo.com. Michael Musto, you can see the Wednesday children's matinees in <laughs> Charlie and the Chocolate Oh, and I, I want to add that Michael Musto did 14 TV segments last week on Debbie Reynolds and And with Mary each Fisher. one, I went from, I interviewed them once to I was their best friend to I lived with them. I was in Star, I was in Star Wars as <laughs> <laughs> their co-star. Exactly. And Jesse Green of New York Magazine and occasional a substitute host here uh, on Theater like Talk. But on, on one day road. I'll approach your greatness. Oh, yeah, listen, no. Susan has been trying to put a knife in my back for years, and I can tell how much happier she is with you than she is with me. I know, because I've been with her for 25 years. <laughs> Good night. Before we close, I want to say that La Mama, where I began my career, oh God, no, <laughs> oh, is celebrating the 50th anniversary <laughs> of the musical Hair. So we close now with a segment from a few years back on Theater Talk, James Rado, Galt McDermott, and Gavin Creel singing, Where Do I Go? And where do we go now? <laughs> where do I go? Follow the river. Where do I go? Follow the call. Where is the something? Where is the someone that tells me why? Sweet faces that tells me why I live and die. Follow the wind song, follow the thunder, follow the neon in young lovers' eyes. Down to the gutter, up to the glitter, into the 
city where the truth lies. Where do I go? Follow the children. Where do I go? Follow their smiles. Is there an answer in their sweet faces that tells me why I live and die? heartbeat where do i go follow my hand where will they lead me and will i ever discover why i live and die oh why i live and die oh why i live and die do i live why do i die Thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Bowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you.